oxide. The O from which iron to be extracted is concentrated by roasting or calcination so that water gets eliminated as vapor. Carbonates get decomposed to release carbon dioxide and sulfide gets oxidized to sulfur dioxide. This concentrated ore is mixed with limestone and coke and sent into a blast furnace to reduce the metal oxide to the metal. Here, coke reduces ferrous oxide to iron, releasing carbon dioxide as shown in the equation here. This is a combination of two simple reactions. In the first reaction, ferrous oxide gets reduced to iron. Let the change in the Gibbs free energy for this reaction be delta G, FeO, Fe. In the second reaction, carbon gets oxidized to carbon monoxide. Let the change in the Gibbs free energy be delta G, C, CO. When the two reactions occur, the net Gibbs energy change becomes delta G reaction is equal to delta G C C O plus delta G F E O F E. This becomes spontaneous when delta G reaction is negative. Ellingham diagrams are useful in predicting the conditions under which a metal ore can be reduced to the metal. It gives information to predict the equilibrium temperature between the metal oxide and the metal. If a graph is plotted for standard Gibbs energy change delta G naught against temperature in Kelvin scale, capital T for both these reactions, then it will go upwards for the reduction of ferrous oxide to iron FeO, Fe, and downwards for the oxidation of carbon to carbon monoxide, C, CO. From the graph, you can see that at a temperature above 1073 Kelvin, carbon reduces iron oxide to iron, but itself undergoes oxidation to form carbon monoxide. Thus, the carbon Carbon monoxide oxidation line crosses the iron oxide iron reduction line and then remains below it. Let us apply this concept to the extraction of iron in a blast furnace. In the furnace, iron oxide is reduced at different temperatures. Iron oxide ore is introduced into the furnace from the top. At the same time, coke is burnt in the lower portion of the furnace, blowing hot air to produce a temperature of 2200 Kelvin. When the coke burns, it produces carbon monoxide and the heat required for the process. The heat produced moves upwards along with the carbon monoxide. The temperature at the top of furnace is lower and hence iron oxides like Fe3O4 and Fe2O3 get reduced to FeO in different stages. This corresponds to the intersection points in the curves which we just discussed. Let us now see how iron oxides get reduced to iron in different temperature ranges. Between 500 and 800 Kelvin, carbon monoxide reduces iron oxides as shown here. Carbon monoxide acts as a reducing agent since it has a low negative delta G0 value for the oxidation of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide than for the oxidation or carbon to carbon monoxide. Thus, in a blast furnace, hematite is reduced by carbon monoxide 
even though carbon is mixed with it. The equation for this reaction is Fe2O3 plus 3CO gives 2Fe plus 3CO2. In the temperature range of 900 to 1500 Kelvin, carbon monoxide reduces ferrous oxide to iron as shown here. Silica is an impurity. Limestone removes it in the form of molten slag, which is taken out from the bottom of the furnace. The molten iron obtained in this process contains 4% carbon along with some other impurities like sulfur and phosphorus. It is called pig iron. Pig iron is melted with scrap iron and coke in the presence of hot air to form cast iron which contains only 3% carbon. It is hard but brittle. Cast iron is heated in a reverberatory furnace lined with hematite, which oxidizes carbon to carbon monoxide to get wrought iron or malleable iron, the purest form of iron. In this process, limestone is added to remove impurities in the form of slag. The metal is removed and separated from the slag by passing it through rollers.